Dan, you guys are in a treat for a treat today. The only thing you're uh, get, you're getting ready to try the best cigar out there. Second best. <laughs> second. Second. <laughs> That's debatable. <laughs> let's on today's the, show, let's pull the audience. What do you think? <laughs> you're in our house today. Right? <laughs> I was just say, the polls might be skewed a little bit. Yeah. So. Go ahead. Hey, raise your hands. Raise your hands. Who's your prefer? It's going to be a style. It's going to be a style. How's, how's it going, so? <laughs> Go <ahead>, Gary. <laughs> you are tuning in to the Cigar Guys podcast where aficionados and newcomers alike gather to explore the vast cigar universe. Meet your host, Alexander Gonzalez, Mark Nikolai, his big little brother, Zachary Nikolai, and Jared Burroughs. So sit back, light up, and let's get the conversation started. J- Jared's a flip. I can never. Uh, I don't know if I fully trust him, so he might vote for you guys. <laughs> wild card. I mean, they <laughs> wild card. <laughs> like ours and like him. I mean, that's right. They I mean, didn't say, "Hey, let's let's do ours." They said, "Let's do yours." That says something. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, because we're gonna come on your podcast. <laughs> and we're gonna do ours. <laughs> Hold the my, facts, my, my, my the the turns. <laughs> and we're going to bring a fourth guy. That's right. <laughs> no, I don't know who he is. We're going to pull him in. <laughs> but yeah, so thank you guys for coming. We're going to go ahead and get started and then go ahead down the line, introduce yourselves. What do you do? What's your position? You know, a little backstory. All right. Well, I'm uh, Stephen Davis. I am, I don't know where to start this. I'm uh, one of the co founders for the Raising Alphas Project and Raising Alphas Hand Rolled Cigars. Um, yeah, been doing that for a couple years. Co-founder with me, uh, David. Uh, we've I'll, been introduce, doing about, I'll introduce about myself. About two years, and no, I wanted to introduce you, kind of like what we do on the show. There we go. You know, I'm I'm Steve, and he's David, and then we got a guy in the middle. That's Some me. Guy. Uh, oh, my name is Gary Rice. Uh, I am actually the video production guy behind the camera for the Raising Alphas Project. I've uh, been doing that since about what, over a year. It's almost over a year now. I feel like over yep. a year. Over now. a year now. I got, officially got brought on uh, September, the beginning of September, end of August last year. Um, and then, uh, wow, what have changed in the last year, right? So, Big change. Yeah, that's me. Happy anniversary. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> right, thank you. All, all former firefighters. All former firefighters. Okay, yeah. yep, all yep. former firefighters. Officially, can I? No, I'm not really and, technically retired. And none of us miss it. No. You still have a firefighter tag on your car, I noticed on the way here. Well, I mean, it's that's just to get out of tickets. That's, yeah, that's, 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 that's pretty much. It. <laughs> There's awesome. still some perks. Yeah. Still some perks. It works. It. it works. Um, no, so I'm uh, David Panzik, uh, like Steve said, co-founder, co-CEO. I don't even know what our position is. Co-founder, yeah. though. Co-founder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Raising Alpha's project. We've been doing it for a few years now, and um, since. Gary has come on board since Chris when Chris came on board. We got a good little launch and platform and then yep. Gary came on board and has been able to elevate us even more since then. So this has been uh it's been an awesome two years, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's come a long way. Better and better. We've come, come a long way, long way from yeah. uh sounds working. similar. Like there's four of us. We've been going for about two years, four of you guys. So yeah. Yeah. I think it's a good uh good matchup we got going here. Yeah. We, uh, we, we, got so we got we've got a uh, three versus three right now on what the best cigar is. And then we're going to have 4v4, right? Yeah. So, so another it's tie. Never <laughs> tie. Always a tie. We're going to have to bring on a fifth. <laughs> That's right. And of course, myself, Alexander Gonzalez, Zach Nikolai's here. Jared Bros is also here. But um, he forgot to put his makeup on, so he's going to sit this one out. And we're going to be talking about, number one, the Raising Alpha Cigar and a couple other side comments. Uh, we had the privilege of smoking this cigar last week. And we confirmed that it was good enough to bring on the show, so we set it up immediately. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, but that's yeah, how we so, roll. Real quick, tell us about the cigar itself, the blend, and a little bit of the backstory behind it. Well, I mean, right here you got a filler binder from Nicaragua. Um, we we've gone through um, uh, Z is our master blender, um, Cordobo. He's helped me blend this. It took a couple months for us to get the the right blend for it, but uh, just great great blends. Got you know good good taste. I mean everything you want in a cigar. I wanted something that was going to have a good draw on it, and you know just um, you know something that had a good draw, good taste, good flavor, not too strong. Something that you could have more than one. And I think it was able to achieve that with just you know 
trial and error. You know, when you're blending a cigar, as you guys know, it's just it's almost like um, is this is this the what I want in a taste? Do you want something with a little bit more spice? Does it have a little bit of cedar kind of feel to it? And uh, some of those things are are kind of wrapped into this. Yeah, um, it definitely Connecticut is, wrapper. Yep. Yeah, trial and error for sure. Because even if you have the idea and you know the leaves you want to put into it, sometimes when you put it together, it doesn't come out quite as you expect it. So sure. you have to do some tweaks and make it better. But it does have a good draw, like you said. And for a Connecticut cigar, it's really good. We've talked about this. Like, sure. I'm not a big Connecticut guy, but there's a few Connecticut cigars that I do really like. So it impresses me when someone makes a good Connecticut cigar because yeah. a lot of them can be. You know, there, there, there are definitely or, something when you when you try Connecticut. I've had a couple guys say that they prefer not to try Connecticut just because you know different tastes or whatever. They like something a little bit more bold. Um, and this one hits right there. It's it it doesn't leave you with that that aftertaste um, that you're just like oh man. Especially for someone who doesn't smoke cigars, you know this is definitely a good good for time first time cigar it is yeah but yeah. it's yeah. also something that you can enjoy on a regular basis yeah um kind of like your guys's i mm -hmm. mean i we told you guys that we we enjoyed yours um time after time and time again and then <laughs> ours came along <laughs> so that was uh, yeah before, before we're kind of going through our stash though, yeah so. well before london house got ours we were olivia right mm -hmm. introduced us to the bases mm -hmm. over there i said we just got these and you guys would love you guys would totally get along try these we tried them and we were uh, on that episode recording we were like Shout out to Besa. Like yeah. this is this is you know, great. We'll, we'll get her to break the tiebreaker. I think that's fair. That's, uh, that's, good that's call, very fair dude. because oh, good call. You know, yes, we have we've Might known have her for a while. A little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I actually think that would be a good uh, a good judge. A good judge. Yeah. Good neutral. Yeah. So shout neutral. out to because we used to see her all the time, and now uh -huh. you guys see her way more than us. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's My, like, she, that, that she may or may not have told me I like you guys way more than the base of guys. She I knows. may have said probably that. believe that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> She's in my DMs. Yeah. <laughs> you too? <laughs> really? Is and she keeps saying, leave me alone. I'm like, oh. <laughs> he doesn't know when to quit. I'm it, sorry, right? I was drunk. I was drunk, I swear. <laughs> That's reverse oh. psychology. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a game. Um one thing that I'll give, I'll give a lot of credit to Steve and with this, uh, because he while, while both of our names our names are on it, this is a raising alpha's project thing. This whole idea behind it though, like Steve had this idea in the middle of a recording. To, and like told everybody the idea during the recording that afterwards like Gary delete that yeah like, we're not cut gonna it out we're not cut gonna it out cut, cut it out, cut it out. but as far as like uh, making the trips over to Z and uh, having like the different samples and the different blends Steve was spearing all of that uh, I remember, like during that time I had like remodel remodel go, remodel going on in my, my house, house where yeah. I was like I got people here like I gotta I gotta supervise this make sure they don't take any of my shit but. I tried the uh, samples when they came out with them, and we ended up deciding yeah, on this one together. Samples, but yep. several of them, we ended up deciding on this one. But Steve was Steve was gun at the box, the wraps. He would send us the uh, ideas, what we thought, give our two cents. But I mean, this was this was his baby, basically. So big. Yeah, it's been it's big yeah. Props. Thank you, Matt. thanks, Bud. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, this is something that you know, as we were talking about it on the show, just kind of, hey, this is why we were in a cigar warehouse. Yeah. A recording with uh, one of our friends, um, um, Carlos, and then Z had walked in, and then we just naturally like, dude, we should have a cigar. This would be perfect. And you know, through time and time and some some a uh, little bit of little bit of trial and error, you try a couple blends, bring them over to the guys. Hey, what do you guys think about this one? Oh, this okay. one's good. Leaves a little aftertaste. Oh, I don't know about that. You know, kind of doesn't have the great great draw. And then the way it's packed too. Yeah. You know, it's not super like tight. Old. Good hold. Pulls. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pulls perfect. Yeah. I'm not a fan of cigars that are really tight. Yeah. Some brands, they have cigars that are tighter than others, but I don't want it to be a chore right. when I'm trying to smoke the cigar. I want right. it to be effortless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even even when you know we were making the base of cigar, like our original one, um, we had a comment that someone said, oh, it's, a, it's a too light of a cigar. Like, it's not packed enough. And yeah. we're like, okay, well, let's try it out. So we got, we told them, we're like, hey, you know, can you pack it more? You know, we still want the same ring gauge in there. Uh, and when we got it, it was terrible. It was a chore to smoke it. Yeah. Like you the flavor was still good, but it just, it, it didn't match a cigar. Right. You know, so we're like, you know what? No, we're not going to do it. Mm -hmm. And then we kept our original blend. See, uh, and that's, that's something about too. Uh, we had this one as an open cigar and mm -hmm. then we changed it to put a foot on the back okay, on yeah. it. 
And that gave us a little bit more of a flavor as you're as you're lighting up that yeah. that first part of the Connecticut. And then as it goes down, you can you can as we were talking about, we were talking about it, like where do you smoke it? Do you smoke it to the first label? Do you smoke it to the first the second yeah. label? And I was like, dude, I finished this one all the way to the tip. You know, it's just yeah. all the way down. And uh, same thing with yours. I yeah. mean, it's it's really one of those cigars you can enjoy the whole time. Well, yeah. even, uh, you know, when we smoked this for the first time, you know, I had just finished smoking one of our cigars. Sure. And I lit this up and I didn't feel bad at all. You know, like, I mean, <laughs> yeah. it was like, it, it's such a smooth cigar and it's a light cigar that, like, I could smoke these back to back all day, I feel like. Yeah, <laughs> like right. Like, if right. I'm on a golf course, you know, as soon as I finish that, one. It's that summer cigar. Yeah, it's that, I'm it's bringing that, it out. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, it, I smoke. Both cigars. I mean, all the way to the end until until it was burning my fingers. Yeah, I smoked yeah. it, and then you're like getting your eye. All right, I'm, I can get a couple more. Yes. Does anyone have a toothpick? I can yeah. get it. I can get it. <laughs> it's funny. You saw Z. He actually came out with that. Did you see that toothpick that he has? A cigar pick? No, I haven't. It's pretty. It's a pretty cool. I've looked into it for us. It's it's essentially you've seen it where you can stab the end. Yeah, I've seen yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see Z's though. Yeah, Z has his own. It's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. It's expensive. <laughs> Well, he could do it. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Two with this, like it, it's got enough flavor to so where if you do smoke it after another cigar, you're still able to taste it. And you don't it's have not, to cleanse it, the palate, right? It's not mm. like so mild that you can't enjoy it. You're still able to enjoy it after another cigar. Yeah. The biggest thing for me, and we touched on this just a little bit, is that morning aftertaste yeah. in the mouth. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't get that, and that that's it. That's a huge selling point for me. You, you have some where I've just like I can't do it. I could yep. I could have it let's say at noon and but the next day it's still there no matter how many times I brush my teeth yeah. but this is I don't get it with this yeah. and I don't think I've gotten it with the base as well no, no um, we are big on that too yeah. yeah yeah so those are I mean that's that's a big sell for me and you know what's crazy like uh, a lot of people compare or they they connect the strength of the cigar to that you know that morning after taste but I really don't think that's it I really think it has to do with the quality of your stick um, because. You know, even our Maduros, I feel like I don't have a bad taste in my in mouth. mouth. And yep. yeah, and even with Padrones, I'll smoke a Padron and it's not, you know, I, was, I, I might still taste in the morning, but it's not like deathly where it's like I brush my teeth three times and I still right. taste you still it. still have that taste in your mouth. Yeah, I really think or it has to do with- the scratchy throat at the end of the night. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, I, I, I truly do think it has to do with the quality of the scar, maybe the acidity in mm-hmm. the uh, uh, tobacco leaves or you know how they age them or what but no i mean with this it's is great. it covered in your book uh, volume two volume two oh, okay <laughs> look for volume two right. and if it's not in there volume three yeah. Yeah. i don't think zach read that book yet so <laughs> i don't know what's about. i have not you know does taylor swift listen to her own music i don't think so you know i, I don't know i would i wouldn't <laughs> maybe 50 percent Fifty percent. Her music, my music, uh, my music. No, I, I wouldn't. If, you wouldn't listen to your music. Taylor, Taylor Swift was my music. I wouldn't listen to myself. Wow, okay. God, I am terrible. Speaking <laughs> of you, Taylor Swift concerts, uh, we did a lot of research on all three of you guys, and we have this video footage of you enjoying Taylor Swift. No, <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's me. I was told to be Beyonce. <laughs> 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 so talk a little bit more too about raising alpha project how that got started so raising alpha's project is uh, essentially this is how it started uh david and i were looking at going into business together um i had brought a group of guys over to the house and i was trying to go into a real estate project and essentially Something. Just like something, yeah. We, uh, it was big. It was during all the COVID stuff. Yep, we're yeah. like, this ain't for us. Like, we got to find a. We got to find something that yep. brings in cash flow. So yep, we were yeah. looking at um, starting a a business with a group of uh, friends. It was six or seven of us, and yeah, something like that. Something like that. And they had all come over to the house. Wife had made some hors d'oeuvres and a charcuterie board and stuff like that for all the guys, and then. Just made a presentation. Hey, look, let's get into real estate. Let's buy you know some rental properties and then do that. Long story short, it ended up not coming in, coming to fruition. I knew I still wanted to do something. David approached me on the side and said, hey, man, I don't know if we can do it on our own with the real estate, but let's try something else. So he had come up with the Raising Alphas 
um, logo, the original we were, shirt. We were looking for like we need a, a catchy phrase, catchy like phrase, something like a, one. Yeah. One big motivator for us was, uh, or one big inspiration for us was lions, not sheep. We're yep. like, we, like that. That caught because that caught my eye. Yeah. And learning about that really was a big switch that went off of me. So we need something that speaks to that crowd, but maybe focus on more of like you know. We had the COVID stuff going on. Maybe speak to the people about like, think about what's happening to your kids. You want to raise your kids. So we're just, we're just, we had a group text. We're just spitting stuff back and forth, back and forth. And I said like a t-shirt, like raising alphas. And me, I was just like, that's it. We're going to Google it. Like, is that a thing? Yeah. And there was nothing. It was like, that's it. Immediately like, he went out and he trademarked it. We got the raising alphas put on a shirt. It's trademarked. Um, that is ours. Um, and then we ordered some shirts. I mean, yep. the next level 6040 shirts, I think they're the 6210s are the, the the actual style shirt. We went to uh, Save Our Generation over in the convention center. And this is in like April, like 22 or something. Yeah. Like two dudes, yeah. no idea about entrepreneurship, you know, both firemen, you know, um, and he was not a fireman at the time. I'd already left the fire service, but just, just looking to do something different. And we showed up on our way there. We're literally setting up a PayPal account or a Venmo account. Um, on the way there, we pull over to Lowe's, we grab a hand truck so we can carry boxes of shirts so we're not just like carrying them, we got a hand truck. And then as soon as we get into this conference, uh, people are like, who are these two dudes and what are they doing with these shirts that say Raising Alphas? Save yeah. our generation. Um, and coincidentally enough, the uh, alpha generation is the same age as our kids. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's we we're talking, we we're at our Save Our Generation conference. So it ended up all kind of working together. Yeah, yeah. We were given a we were given a booth at no cost. We sold a crap ton of shirts. Um, we got on a bunch of different interviews, interviews with yeah. several several um, um, Lo just local local, yeah. local independent journalists. And then we we left there thinking, dang, maybe we got something a little bit more than just a t shirt. So we had people come into us like, well, what is it? We're like, it's a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is that? We're like, I don't know yet. Yeah. But we'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll figure it out. <laughs> you, you know how when you start something, you start a, yep. you, you you basically start something because you're looking. There's a problem, and you're trying to find a solution. Yeah, yeah. And that's when we kind of came up with this idea of like, there's a problem out there with our youth. There's a problem out there with kids not being leaders. There's a problem out there with parents not having maybe the the tools, the resources, some of the things that can speak to their kids or speak to other adults the right way. And so when we got got approached by several um, single mothers. Hey, do you have an alpha rental for the day? Like, can you rent an alpha for the day was one of the th suggestions. Yeah. And while we don't have that, even today, I mean, um, I guess Gary. I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate <He's>, it. <laughs> we'll rent Gary out. Yeah. But uh, we'll no, it's baby, just. Baby bearded alpha. Oh, baby bearded yeah. alpha. Yeah. All right, continue. Those, those are kind of, kind of our things that were like, hey, let's start a show. And so we started talking about it on, on a podcast, created our podcast. It was really sitting on a table in our kitchen one of our kitchens and not as good of a setup as this no like, no, like, no yeah, yeah this yeah, is no, listen this, it was pretty garbage setup Steve, yeah, you, like, you let me your your gopro this past week and i it had some old footage on it did oh, you see boy. it oh, oh you didn't gosh. see that one footage no not okay, that good. one footage i look at all of it yeah. just in case yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but the the quality that you are at now, not just because of me, but just like no, of course, what, yeah. only what, because of you, only yeah. because of me. Let's be real. Um, <laughs> it's not wrong. Is, it's not wrong. Was astronomically like even just the content that what you guys talked about, like what your presentation and how well you guys have grown as hosts has far exceeded probably what you guys originally thought it would be. Right. You know so. Props to you, both of you. For it that. was. Uh, it's fun to reminisce on. Yeah. Yeah. To to how it was, and your camera kept shutting off. We're just like, oh, damn it. Yeah. The yeah. Thirty yeah. minute. That's yeah. Thirty minute oh, time. You can't get around on. it. I got, oh, what it what were we nuts. talking about? And it was. Um, it. We, I it had does. to go back in. The editing was such a pain in the ass, and I'm not. You know, I don't do anything production. Honestly, it was all yeah. figuring it out on our own. Audio production, all well, that. Well, even just the way we're able to converse on it now and just oh, have yeah. our normal conversations. Like we, uh, I couldn't imagine. I mean, I, I would recommend anybody that hasn't listened to us. If you want a good laugh, start at episode start one. Start at episode one. Yep. Don't do two, three, and four beyond that, though. I would say start <laughs> at the beginning of 2023. That's yep. when we started to really kind of come Pick into up. our groove. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 fun to look back on. Yeah, that. it's funny. I got a uh, conversation with someone today at lunch. One of the uh, um, the butlers at London House, and he was saying that he listens to our stuff, and you know, he went back to our earlier episodes, and he's like, don't, "Yeah, I noticed it." Don't. 
Yeah, <laughs> there was a, a huge difference. He's like, now I'm up to this episode, and I'm still listening to your content, and you know, so it's kind of cool, uh, you know, where we've come um, in the last couple of years. So you yeah. know, now now have a cigar. Well, yeah. we were told when we started that eighty percent fail, right? Eighty percent, eighty percent of podcasts when they start, they end up failing just because you know they just give up and not get the traction. Yeah. It's not easy. Up. I mean, you guys know, right? Yeah, you get not, it. Yeah. yeah, you get it. And we we told ourselves then, like, we're not we're in that twenty percent. And then eventually we're going to end up being in that five percent, mm -hmm. and then that one percent. We're still, we're I'd say we're still in that twenty percent. Still, big mountain we to still climb. Gotta, we're, yeah. The progress is there. Yep. We're not done. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. People aren't consistent with it, especially like podcasts or yeah. any you know short videos, TikToks, whatever. You have to be consistent with it. You mm -hmm. got to be posting all the time. You have to be replying to comments. It's full time job. It is. It oh, really 100%. is more than a full time job. Yeah. <laughs> oh my <laughs> yeah. gosh. It's day and night. You know uh sleepless nights editing it, it's a lot of work i mean we even we tell people you know actually i think what two three podcasts ago we're like yeah just go check out our first podcast compared to now and it's the same room but we didn't have any decorations just a flat white wall yep. you know yeah table was shitty chairs were shitty we had the one camera with the 30 minute timer yeah. and it's yeah. like okay well it just you get off real, yeah. real close everybody to each other everybody can scoot yeah. shoulder to shoulder yeah. and then like we were using our my laptop the webcam horrible oh yeah yeah, yeah. you know because yeah. i knew it wouldn't time out we went to uh we still have it for streaming but Streamyard was our mm -hmm. is our um our streaming platform and uh just just getting on that trying to just talk about it yeah I, I I even told someone same, same thing as you. Uh, someone is asking about our podcast. I'm like, hey, you should check it out. You know, just looking at some of our recent videos. And she's like, no, I have to start at episode one if I want to really watch your podcast. And I'm like, please don't. Please. Like, it, don't it's do not it. like you it's won't, not, you it's won't not, do episode two. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, is it's not like the podcasts are kind of like. You have to watch episode one exactly. to understand what's yeah, going on not, with episode ten. Yeah, it's not yeah. Friends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not. It's you, not. You could you could listen to the last one and still kind of pick it up. Sure. <laughs> yeah. no, now there might be some things line. we've we've talked about in like episode sixty that might have been in episode ten. Yeah. You know, but it's all kind of, current information for the current, most part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's all current. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially like with you guys talk about you talk about a lot of current events and stuff mm -hmm. that happened or the crazy liberals that are saying wacko stuff wacko yeah. stuff yeah a lot of that and i like and we were able to get different just a different variety of guests on as well because the whole idea of it with you know raising alpha's project when you have when you have someone that has met that we'll, we'll call it like that 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 alpha level like uh, you know entrepreneur multimillionaire however you want to call it financially free or just a great father able to take care of their family yeah everyone has their different paths of getting to that there's no one set path whether it be uh, parental influence or a coach or yeah. or a life coach something something of that uh, or a traumatic event that happened in your life where a switch went off everyone has their own different experiences to get to that level to where they are now so we love having the different variety of people on there and just hearing more of your story like yeah. tell, tell us how you got tell you know what um what's his name the scud the scud is the nickname the wake oh, order yes um, I can't Darren. Think Darren. Darren. Yeah. Darren. World. You know the Tony Hawk of uh, wakeboarding. Wakeboarding. Mm -hmm. wakeboarding. Yep. Here in his story, small kid, undersized. Not a not a not a not a tall guy. But yep. I wouldn't I wouldn't mess with him. He'll mess you up. <laughs> right. well, he's, uh, what, what belt is he in jujitsu? I, I don't know. Like the five black, fifth black or some black shit something. like that. Yeah. I don't know. Fourth degree or something. But like that. Something you like know that. The, he had he wouldn't be where he is right now. But unless his parents. Dro drove him to uh, wakeboarding practice every yeah. day, and the parents had no idea. They're like, "I don't know what this is," but yeah. our kid likes it, and he's taking up on but it. But he so ended up being a champion. He ended up games. being a world champion yeah. Be yeah. because of that, all because of his parents. So everyone has their own experiences, and they're passing those down in one way or another to their kids as well. Yeah, and it, it's 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 great having those different conversations. No, it really is. I mean, even uh, you know, we went to Lake Mary High School and. There was a lot of wealthy parents over there, but you could see the difference between uh, parents that wanted their kids, you know, to have that alpha mentality, you know, versus parents that were, you know, I don't want to say new money, but they were like, I struggled and I don't want you to struggle, you know, but th that's not how you should raise them because then, then they don't have that motivation for more. Right? Life you is a struggle. I mean? It is. And you need you, to be, you you need be, be prepped trained. for it, man. Exactly. You yeah. You have got to be prepped for it. Because you know what? When you're 21, 22, 23, graduating college, and you know everything has been taken care of your whole life, and you're looking for a job, you're going to be expecting people, you know, to just hand you a job, mm -hmm. and then to hand you your paycheck, or you know, if you want to start a business, 
you know, you don't know the first step. But see, of it. and those are some of the mm-hmm. things that we we talk about on our show is is values at the home, home values. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> whether you come from lower income, middle income, or higher income type of family, if the parents are instilling those values, yeah. Either way, the results will be there. The results will be there. Exactly. You could have. I mean, let's just look at our president, the real president. Let's look at him. Look at his kids. I yeah. mean, they have good values. They were grown up in a Tall, millionaires. Tall home. forty-five. Yeah, forty-five. Yeah. Okay. You look. You look at. I just got us. Uh, no, we said forty-five. We said forty-five. My favorite number is forty-five. Forty-five. That's same. all it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you look at. You look at his children and how they've come. You know, they're successful people, yeah. business entrepreneurs. They have. And they're respectful. They're respected in there to some extent, yeah. you know, to, to a certain side of people. But those are those are exactly, and they didn't, oh, you know, silver platter, I need everything handed to me. That's not the case that was going on. Yeah. So I think that you can do the same thing. Well, even, you know, uh, you know, with 45, when he got invited to go see the queen, right, the first thing he said was, I'm going to bring my family. Yeah. And he brought his entire family over there, you know, and every president just brings themselves they go meet her you know well i mean now she's dead but you know they go meet her her. yeah (laughs) but but they would go to england you know uh meet them and then leave and that's it but you know he ended up coming in and being like listen i'm bringing my wife my kids my grandkids you know everything because it's huge yeah it's a big deal Mm -hmm. I mean, they they definitely got the room for it so and you see some people have posted like you know you can judge a person based on their kids and they'll show his kids and they'll show like kamala's kid for example it's a nine day difference (laughs) well yeah yeah (laughs) well and you know 46 is crack crackhead kid yeah yeah Yeah. 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 family values do matter i mean it it, i swear to god today even me and my dad were talking about it and we're like you know my dad my dad said something he's like you could take a 25 year old you know coming fresh into this country like raised in you know like kosovo where my family's from and then a 25 year old that was raised here, and odds are the immigrant would do a thousand Four times better. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, and it's just, I wouldn't right. doubt it. Yeah, because Europe, you know, they establish family values growing up. Yep. You know, you respect your elders. Yep. Uh, you, you know, I mean, even you've seen me when I go to New York, like I act different, you know, because it's just, if my uncle asked me to grab something, I got to go grab it. You right. know, and, and usually anytime we're there, we're there for a wedding. So I mean, that's that is in our culture too. We've just kind of gotten away from it. We have. Whether it's because kids are on the cell phones, parents aren't paying attention. Whether it's because some of the stuff, like I wonder sometimes where some of my 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 boys get some of the stuff they hear. Yeah, is that from their peers? Is that from their school teacher? Is that from the the stuff they watch on TV? I think it's a combination of all. Yeah. So I just have to be cognizant of it to say, hey, look. Pull them back in. Hey, this is how we handle things. Yeah. You know, reset it. Reset that that what they're doing and say, look, this is not how we do things. This is how I this is not how I raised you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think for on that note, like it's really important to as a father, and I've got two kids now, one year old and a six year old. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, little one. Um she or I feel like it's super important as a father, the head of the house is to establish a very defined set of core values for your home. Like, what do you want your kids to grow up doing? What do you want them, what kind of core values do you want them moving out into the workforce, like out into their first job? How do you want them to interact with a boss one day? How do you wanna, even as he's a six year old, how do you wanna end up, like you you coach soccer, how do you want, like how do I want my son to interact with his coach? Right. How do I want my daughter to interact with her maybe dance teacher or other peers. Like I just got my son um, into jujitsu last week and we tried two different Good gyms. Good move. And dude, I'm, I've never seen this before. Currently in how other boys are raised, but we went to one gym. I wasn't privileged to sit in on the class. They kind of had like a parent viewing room. Yeah, yeah. And so I couldn't hear anything. I said, hey, son, like, let's go try this one other gym. It's a little bit closer to the house. Um, it's only twice a week for an hour where that class was 30 minutes. I feel like it was like it wasn't enough. Yeah. Um, so we went and tried this one and literally like we walked in the door. The coach met him at the front door and said he had never done any type of jujitsu before. I have never done any type of jujitsu before. And he walked in the door and immediately shook his hand, looked him in the eye, said no, like he didn't let go of his hand and said like shake it, say, shake it strong, son. That's huge. Like, that's you huge. know what I mean? Yeah. Like look me in the eye. So I had to talk with him on the way home about that. 
Um, but even furthermore, I, I got a little clip of video um, of the coach introducing him and his friend to the class. And they all went down the line and said, what are the core values of this gym? What is the core values that we want this gym, this this um, I don't know what it's called, uh, dojo or, or just jujitsu jiu gym? Yeah, yeah. Correct, uh, someone correct me if I'm wrong. Um, what do we want the core values to be here? And how quickly and how uh, efficiently that translated over and the how home, can yeah. it translate over into the home life? And um, his... I, I want to talk to him more about this, but one thing that I really took away and I've already started implementing it in, in my home over the past few days was he said, what happens if you do something wrong in school? And all the kids were like, well, we get in trouble. He's like, no, you don't get in trouble. You're held accountable. Yep. Yeah. Like whenever you come into this gym, like we hold you accountable. Like whenever you go home, you're, you don't get in trouble. You're held accountable. Mm -hmm. And I asked my son, I'm like, do you know what that means? And he's like, mm -mm. so I explained it to him. And that was such, I, I literally, at the, the end of the class, I went up to the coach and I was like, listen, I don't see that. Or I, I would be willing to bet that you don't see that hardly anywhere, whether it be in sports these days for kids yeah. and in certain homes where they have a dis certain defined set of core values that this is what you will be. And there's no, there's no debate about it. This yeah. is like, this is what you're raised to be and you will have respect for your elders. You'll have respect for your parents, for your coach, for um, all these different aspects in your life. And it was just a surreal moment where I got to watch these kids and they're all ages from six, probably to 10. And they were all, yes, sir. Shake, shook, like some of them came up to me, shook my hand, strong, hard, looked me in the eye, said, thank you for being here. Like went up to him and he's like, just set this, course of action in this gym and in the homes as this is what we are this is who we are and there's no room for debate yeah and you just don't see that anymore mm -hmm. yeah no you really don't no. and it's good to have that too because you know like you're not getting that at schools nowadays you no, know the, the proper correction or the proper teaching how to behave in the real world so if you have that something like that outside of school not just at the home but you know whether it's the dojo or whatever sport you're playing and you have a leader it's able to instill these values in your kids it makes your job a little bit easier mm -hmm. you know because you don't have to now worry about the school system strictly teaching your kids how to behave you have these other people a group of men helping guide your kids as well so i think that's great yeah yeah it's it's and we it's need huge, more of that man. yeah absolutely 100%. Some, something that we've said david says this uh, quite a bit you know on the show he's, he always references you know says to our audience to say look we're not we're not on a high horse trying to tell you that what we say is the Bible or, or anything. If you don't listen to us, you're a terrible person. <laughs> In fact, you're, you're a terrible parent if you're you don't terrible, listen to us. Terrible parent. We know everything. Now, we, we, we don't claim to know right. everything. We're, right. we're two young fathers as far as, you know, our kids are go, our kids go. You know, his son, his oldest is 10. Still, Mine's just behind him uh, getting ready to turn 10. So we're young fathers in a sense uh, that our kids haven't been around that long. But, you know... In for Brody and for Caden, we only got maybe eight year, more years if we're lucky, you yeah. know. Um, or, or, well, we've got at least eight more years, I would say. Um, hopefully longer, you know, because they're going to move on, do their own thing, is yeah, what I'm course. trying to get at. Yeah, you know, no, so yeah. we've got eight years essentially to ensure that their values, their foundation is strong. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what we do on the show is yes, we don't know everything, we're still learning as fathers, we're still hoping to gather our gather information from our audience to say, hey, look, maybe you have something, our, our guests, hey, maybe you have something to provide to us as a parent. Hey, this is what I do. Something that I can learn. And I'm always an open, open-minded to mm -hmm. those conversations because I want to be the, the best. I talk about being the best version of yourself. Well, that's me being a dad. You know, how do I become the best father per you know, father figure if I don't if I don't reach out and hear it from somebody else? Yeah. You have to be able to take the criticism. When it's warranted. Yes. Yes. Um, Except if you're commenting on a page and you're starting to be rude, you're going to get the fire. Well, yeah. All depends on how you approach it, too. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't come at us. Don't come at us emotionally. Yeah. So, because <laughs> you come at us, believe me, this tag team this, don't you stop. Don't, you, uh, I, can get, I can get nasty. <laughs> but it all really, you know, one of the things that really comes back to is just leading by example, uh, something we talk about a lot. Uh, and we talk about our kids and we always tell, we've, we've always told our kids, my parents have told me like, you can be whatever you want to be. You can be whatever you want to be. And, but if I'm telling my kid that and he sees me 
in the job that I had prior to this, making decent, okay money, but coming home angry every day, just coming home annoyed, upset. It affected my health, affecting yeah. like my relationship with everybody. Like, but, but dad, you're telling me I can be what I, I want to be, but you're why have, is this what you wanted? Like, yeah, why yeah. haven't you? Why haven't you done so, what you want to do? Exactly. Yeah. And it's like, well, you got me there. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it really just all comes down to leading by example. So it's, it's, it's great that they're able to, whatever may happen to us in the future, see, the kids are going to have all of this where they can always reference back to us, uh, reference back to this is what my dad's did. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one thing, too, we harp on a lot is just having that critical thinking skill, which is something that is just <clears throat> so absent right now. Yeah. But that starts at the home. All of that starts at the home. So I did a on uh, my Instagram at David Pancic, um, I did a reaction <laughs> to a, uh, you know, a Charlie Kirk. Uh, he goes on to the campuses mm -hmm. and he does these talks. And, you know, I don't agree with everything Charlie Kirk says, but for the most part, he's a force of good, I would argue. But he's very good at having civil discourse, calm conversations with these college students yeah. and just asking questions. And there was somebody in particular that was talking to him that was just, well, I'm going to vote for, I'm probably going to vote for Kamala because I'm a Democrat. And that's just like what I do. He's like, but why? He's like, because I'm a Democrat. It's like, bro, like, give, a, give me something. Yeah, like, yeah. Give, give, give me a more. Policy. That's, give me, uh, give that's me okay. More, and that, yeah. that's okay. That really is okay. That's okay if that's what, if that is your line of thinking, but give me more than just, if you're, if you want to vote for 45, again, say, Give me more than because he's a Republican. Like right. I don't, yeah. I don't accept that as yeah. an answer. Go into a little bit. Tell me, tell me why. And that's it's absent because these kids now they're being told what to think. Right. And yeah. They start to the home. Tell me that you like and inflation. Then, tell me yeah, that. Yeah. You know. <laughs> tell me you don't <laughs> yeah. like having money. Yeah. Um, it's tell me you like immigrants coming tell, in here. Tell me you like communism. Yeah. Tell me you like communism. <laughs> that's okay. But, I mean, I can get starts, behind that. Yeah. You, it's at least you have something. I don't agree with it, but I can right. get behind it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> at least you stand for something. Yeah. Yeah. I want yeah. communism. I want people are going to cut this. I want <laughs> socialism. You know, if you get, I can I can get behind your your, you your just logic. Want, you just yeah. want someone that can be raising alphas, raising. Beta? You just want <laughs> <laughs> you just want someone to be able to stand strong on their values and have a why. Yeah, not just exactly. yes. This well, is what even my if parents you, told if you me disagree to with them, like oh, let's say they do like communism. Sure. You respect them more than someone that just says, just oh, say I'm a Democrat. I haven't really looked therefore. into their yeah. policies. Yeah. I really don't know. Yeah, but, but I see that they're even that. There's a D next to the name, and I'm going to vote for them. But yeah. and like that starts at the house, because I guarantee you that's how the parents were. Mm -hmm. And then they're at the universities, and that's what they are That's what they do at the universities. They don't They don't educate you at the universities. They tell you what to know. They and tell that you can what go to both think. ways. It can Because go. there yeah. are families out there that, that say, hey, I vote for this way. I vote red because, of, because it's red. Yeah. Or I vote blue because it's blue. Uh, I want you, like David's saying, critical thinking. You know, yeah. I'm voting for this person because of this and that and this and that. Yeah. That's what it should align to. And, you know, it's funny. Uh, we actually talked to someone um, about something. You saying that it starts at the house kind of made me, you know, think about this. But we were talking to uh, a girl, you know, one of the bartenders, the place across the street. And um, she was saying, yeah, when I get married, I'm not going to take his last name. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, well, you That's know, fine. why not? And then she's like, well, I just feel like I don't owe him that. And I'm like, okay, well, here's the way I think about it, right? The man, you know, has to take her out, right? He's providing for her. He buys her a ring. He gets her a wedding, right? He, you know, brings her to the honeymoon. Here's a man providing for his family. Right. And I'm guessing you want to be a stay-at-home mom, right? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay. Why not take his so name? So the least you could do is take his name. And she's like, yeah, but I want to keep my name. I'm, you know, the only, uh, like, I'm a child of one and I'm a daughter and, you know, we'd lose our name forever or whatever. And I'm like, I'm like, I get that, but you're joining his family, you know? And I'm like, what do you think your kids would say? They're born and they're, your first argument that you've ever had was you gain married and you couldn't even join together as Compromise one. with that, yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, when you get married, you're joining to one entity. Right. You know, you're a married couple. Now you are Mr. and Mrs. Gonzalez. Or I, Mr. Will, and Mrs. I will say now we might have a difference of opinion. Um, I know this individual. And so I understand he took his wife's last name. And while we're looking at it, just by saying that, everyone's like, what the? No, I, I know someone like that. So but for a valid reason, though, the reason was and, and I and I give him I give him a lot of props. He, he always 
He told me, because I asked him, I said, why would you take your wife's last name? And he says, the reason I took her last name is because my father was absent. He wasn't around. He wasn't good. He didn't, he didn't show me any values. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But my father-in-law showed me values. He was a, a guy, in the, he was a fire chief in the fire, he was a chief in the fire service. Yeah. Um, he provided him with value and they grew up and they have a big family. They got like eight kids. Well, yeah. So there was no pride in his last name. There yeah. was no yeah. pride yeah. in I his last name, but his too. wife's right. last name, there was pride. Yeah. Yeah. And he saw his father-in-law as more of a father than his, his real dad. Yeah. And so in that sense, I'm okay with that. Yeah, me too. And I, I get behind it. back to having a reasoning. Correct. Why you do Correct. I, I can get behind Correct. that. Correct. I got, and I get behind that after I heard the story. So yeah. much of it right now, though, is you got those feminists where they're like, well, I'm not going to take his name. Like, yeah. this is my name. It's like, I, you mean, it's your granddad. Dad's name. Actually, coincidentally enough. <laughs> no, but um, you know that kind of leads us to why we've 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 come out with uh, you know a cigar. You know, we we wanted to we wanted to show that we're leading leading a next generation. Okay, and while I don't know a whole lot about cigars until this beginning of this year, I'm I'm taking the step into uncharted territory, uncharted water waters to understand this side of the business and to be a luxury style. I want to I want to label this a luxury style cigar. You know, we're in um, our first our first uh, lounge is the London House, the drawing room. Yeah. And it's a high end private club, private members only club. You guys have been there. We've smoked plenty of cigars there. And you guys are in there as well. And to me, that brings this as a luxury style cigar. You don't just get in there. Yeah. Um, you have to be invited. And when you're invited, it's because you're a member. We're exactly. members there. Yeah. And so we are that's how we're able to be a luxury style cigar. So with that, I think shows us, you know, the raising alphas. That's why we're we want to lead the pack in that sense where we wanna we wanna this to be a brand that people know of. You know, people are constantly like, Man, that's a really good cigar. And I get behind it for one reason, not just because, it, not for more than one reason, not just because it's a great cigar, but because they have good values. They represent something of, of good values, good home values, good American values, something that I can get behind. And that's why I want people to know about our cigar, the Raising Alpha's Hand Rolled Cigar. It's, it's, it's um, something that we've worked hard for. We've, we've taken a leap of faith. We've taken, uh, like I said, uncharted waters to try something like this. And like I said, I'm a little biased, but I think it's one of the best cigars I've ever smoked. But uh, I mean, outside t- of the Besa, t- you know? take it a step further though. <laughs> Top <like>. two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take it a step further, and you were just talking about how you are stepping into uncharted waters, like you've never done this before. How many times have people thought of a good idea and have been too scared to jump on it and to act on something because I don't know anything about it? Right. I'm gonna. Uh, call you out and say regardless if you don't know anything about it regardless if you are scared to do something take a leap of faith try it will it be successful maybe maybe not but how much are you going to learn from this process sure how much are you going to grow as a person maybe the cigars is just the product but what is what have you learned as a businessman and you can probably speak on this just for a minute is and and I'll speak to both of you guys from both cigar lines. What have you guys learned in the business aspect as men jumping into uncharted waters, learning what you have about the business behind this? I've been blowing your phone up for probably a couple of weeks now. <laughs> it's, it's been a little while. Hey, and I always answer if I see you call my car, he needs something. Yes, uh, <laughs> like I've been blowing your phone up because you guys have already jumped yeah. into this. You guys, you know. When you approached us that day at Blend and Barrel, I mean, you're like, I mean, talk about a salesman. You were yeah. just like, have you guys hey, tried these bases? Hey, what do you guys like? And I was like, I don't know. You know, you know. I, I was I was incognito. You know, I was just wearing a t-shirt, and I was like pretending to look around, and I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, you know, what do you guys like to smoke? Not bad. Oh man! This oh, is you good. should like, try oh, yeah, this one. <laughs> and funny enough, is we had just finished smoking your cigar earlier that yeah, day for like, the first time. Yeah, it was like within was, twenty-four hours. Yeah, because yeah, uh-huh. we had done uh-huh. a show, and Olivia had pointed onto your cigar, and we're like, "Man, this is a really good cigar." I think we smoked two that day, and then came yeah. to that that Wednesday, <laughs> smoked a third, and smoked a third. <laughs> yeah. I was like, "Man, this is our new cigar." Until yeah. ours comes out, yeah. and then, uh, but we're going through our products, so we might need to smoke some of those. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got any free product? Yeah. <laughs> But no, I mean, I've been blowing your phone up for a while now, just yeah. trying to 
understand like, all right, how do I get these things? You know, I got to get a wholesale license. I got to get a retail license. Jeez, the state really steals everything from yeah. it, don't they? Um, then getting the website. All right, the website we already had, but there's a lot of things that I didn't know when you're selling tobacco on a website. So David and I, you know, passing all the information, he's been, shit. he's been, yeah, he's been, he's um, been basically yeah, putting a website like together <laughs> and getting all the finances, the invoices squared yeah. away, and and that's, I mean, you can talk more on that. That's kind of your your uh, area. I'd rather area. not talk about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I know David. He's probably throwing stuff as soon as we hang up the phone. Yeah, right. Right. And oh. the, the yearly fee is thirteen hundred for those additional oh, charges. Right. Yeah, we, we just found out. We just got our charge hit today. Oh, no. I'm like, son of a bitch. Oh, no. <laughs> Always trying to get something. Yeah. Well, it's funny. I mean, you were touching on uh, Gare, the um, you know having having an idea and going after it and attacking yeah. it, and how many people have these ideas but don't yeah. go after it. There's a uh, and this this is started when I was in the towards the latter end of the fire department when I knew this wasn't what I was supposed to be doing. I need to find find another avenue to do something. Yeah. But I had like you had the YouTube motivational videos. And there was one guy in particular, he always had clips of him and like these various videos I listened to, motivational speaker, uh, Les Brown, L-E-S Brown. He's got some really good stuff. And one of the things he said that hit me pretty well, and I still remember it, is that, you know, imagine that you're on your deathbed and you're surrounded by all these ideas that you had that you never did anything with. And they're telling you, like, we came to you. Like, we mm. came to you to give us life and you did nothing with it. Yeah. And it's, that's... That's, that's that's scary. That's a, that's a wild thought to have. Yeah. And yeah, to answer your question about what have we learned since starting a business, I will say, first of all, kind of what you were talking about before that, you learn more when you're actually doing your profession than you Absolutely. do getting the degree. Like I'll never knock anyone for getting a business degree, but I'll tell them that you're not going to learn nearly as much as you do until you get started. Yep. And a, we, a lot of the stuff that we've told you was stuff we had to learn. Sure doing it because we didn't really have the cigar mentors sure. from that aspect of the business. Yeah. Even, even the questions that you were asking me, it was like, I totally forgot about, yeah. you know, and then I'm like, holy shit, we have to do this, this, yeah, this, and yeah. this, you know, there's like, a lot of steps. Yeah. Like there's not a the website. There's not a manual yet. No, no, no. Maybe in volume two. Volume two yeah. Everyone does it differently. Three. Three. Yeah. One, three. One, three. Everyone does it differently as well. I mean, if you talk to different uh, people in the industry, they have a completely different story sure. of how they started, how they learned. Um, and when we started the podcast and having different guests on, we started to get more information from other people in the industry. Kind of sure. like you know us giving you advice. Yep. We get advice even after we started to further improve uh, you know, and further learn more about how to do it. I mean, we learned everything from how to start to how to manage, how to be the reps, how to, you know, manage the back end, shipping. I mean, the whole business right now is run by us, sure. essentially. Uh, aside from outsourcing the product from the Dominican Republic, once it gets here, we have to handle everything. Yeah. So that's a, definitely a big learning curve. Because anyone, I mean, where we come from uh, a family of business owners, we have a general aspect of how to run a restaurant, for example, or how to run like a law firm. So you can run a business, but when you specialize in something that's new, you now have to learn all the intricacies of that business and being cigars there's all these licenses that are involved it's harder legally because it's a you know yeah, no restricted product no, yeah, yeah. It, it's a product that's for people now 21 years and older so there's a lot of regulations with that advertising regulations so there's a lot you got to learn in this business specifically and then with any business that you it's, decide to take it's on. It's funny that you mentioned that you can go to college for this and you're not going to learn nearly as much as when you're actually doing it. Like how many times have I said like I got a four year degree like business administration did, did, not, did, had, did do nothing for this. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. But you have so many companies right now. Um, you know uh, one of our one of our guys or one of the guys we like Andy Frasilla he talks about over there at First Form like he will any day take that new hire on fresh out of a uh, high school. Mm. I want to start in the warehouse. I want to learn most everything about you. Part is the warehouse. Yeah. I want to start in the warehouse and I want to climb my way. It's like, I have no, I have no college degree. Like good. Yeah. Good. Uh, you, you were going hold to, you know, yep. exactly. You were yeah. going to learn so much more about what you need to actually know doing it. Yeah, hands yeah. on, not taking these electoral classes or these elective, elective classes yeah. that you have, yeah. the uh, you know, your humanities and shit like that. Like I that's got a lot from that class. Important. I mean, but look look at <laughs> I mean, all three of us have degrees in, in the fire service and we all spent um, a good part of our careers in the fire service. But 
do you looking back jump back what you've been out how many years now Ooh, I got out around like 2017. Okay, so you're you're coming up on the seven, six, eight seven, yep. eight years mark, yep. and you're one year, one year. So one year, I haven't even hit the year mark. Yep. Did you think? Let's jump back three years. Did you think three years ago you would be where you are today? No. Not at in, all. in business? No, not at all. Not and, at all. And and why is that? Like, if you had to put a finger on, like, this is why. Like, why do you think you are where you are today? Because well, of what? Well, I, I'll say a lot of the reason is because I had a belief that I was going into the fire service and I needed to climb the ranks to be the best version of myself. I needed to be in the fire service, so I needed to achieve the degrees I have in order to become an, the, the best in that. But outside of the fire service, what am I? I, I don't have anything. I haven't built anything. I'm, that's all I am. That's my own identity. Now, my identity, it, it goes farther than that. I'm not just a fireman. Now I'm a business owner, co-founder, cigar, got a cigar line. I got a merch line. I got a book. Entrepreneur, you know, baby. Entrepreneur. Yeah. And I'm meeting different people that are giving me different walks of life to say, hey, this is how what I did right. This is what I did wrong. And I yeah. think that's important. You know, while I thought being a fireman was what I wanted to do, and I, and I still have a passion for that. I don't want to do it anymore, but I have a passion for that. Yeah, yeah. There's this whole new world that I'm kind of like looking in at now, and I've been exposed to a different, I talk about it all the time, sitting at a different table, sitting at a different table where you have men and women that have been through these entrepreneurs, these business owners that are teaching you things. Yeah. These are things that we talk about on our show. We have experts in their fields show up on our show. We've had doctors, we've had attorneys, we have, um, who else? Police officers, lots of firemen. Um, yeah, it's weird. I don't know. Um, we keep saying uh, how much we hate firemen, but we're always, we always we're have always on our show. But I mean, they, they, they bring value. Yeah. Um, uh, we've, had, we've had uh, former <laughs> former athletes that are now their own, own, athletes, their own business. We've yes. had um, um, John. Yep. John's health been insurance. on our show. Health Not John insurance. Mason, but John Mason is insurance. Yeah. You've got for, John. Works um, for PBD. Yep. Um, we have... More than a Hooper. Uh, we have a dad. Yep. We had a dad that's raising an autistic child. So talking yep. about that avenue of it as well, raising that child. Now he started his own t-shirt business as yep. well. We're going to be doing some stuff with, with him. his with that child with, with, with that, his son. His autistic with, yeah, eighteen autistic year old has child. got a business with his father for t-shirts, awesome. and he's got a YouTube. Hmm. So what it's an incredible it's, story. Mike's that was. bros. Right, Mike's bros. Mike, and I'm telling you, man, these are bros. Yep. These are these are exactly what we talk about on our show, and that. You know, while we are new at bi being business owners, while we are new at Cigar Line, while yeah. we are new at ent being an entrepreneur, we are providing that value through our show to say, hey, look, let's have you guys on and let's talk more about cigars and how you built your business. Yeah. Let's talk more about how this individual, Tomo, law enforcement officer, 12 years, got out of that, has one of the best um, local um, hormone, clinics. hormone clinics in Orlando, and he's got four others around the country. So and he's getting ready to open up several more. So these are these are just some of the people. Our our close friend Chris, Chris is is built this empire called Goliath, and it is it is just taking on just a different type of investment thought process. All three of us are in it, you know, and and things that we're learning every single day. I mean, I say it all the time. Yeah, you know, when people ask me about Goliath, how did you get started in Goliath? And when I met Chris a few years ago, he was. 30 or 31 and he was retired living off a of passive income and he didn't go to college and i was just like hold up hold up wait a minute there's another <laughs> side of life you've, than in this fire service yes yeah, like you've clearly figured something out that yeah. i'm trying to find let's let's be buddies <laughs> well, even yeah. even today i was on steve about this um i was so amazed today my car is getting detailed right now right and I pull up to this shop. It was like in a warehouse. It was actually where Del Air used to. They used to own that whole strip mall warehouse thing. I pull up over there. I walk in. And it's a bunch of 19-year-old kids running this place. And then I met the owner, Ethan. And Ethan, he's 19 himself. Went to Seminole High School. He's at Seminole State College right now, you know, just for business administration. But here he is, has an LLC, a whole business. What's the business called? uh it's called a uh, uh, need for clean yeah need, need for, for clean. clean detailing okay yeah how so, old is he 19 19 that's awesome. years old yeah that's awesome and he would detail cars in high school you know just his buddy's cars whatever and then after high school he kept doing it out of his parents garage and then he made enough money to start his business and now he hired all of his friends 
And, you know, he hired professional detailers that, you know, they're on his payroll. He's paying them um, to run this place. And he's just sitting down in the office telling people, you know, hey, you know, uh, you own Del Air. You got 37 trucks. Let me detail all your 37 trucks on a monthly basis, two month basis, whatever. And I'm like, I was just so amazed because I haven't seen a person like that or a group of people like that in such a long time. I mean, I'm only 25 myself. But, you know, and we had people would call us like that, you know, just because we always had ideas that we would, you know, try to do the cigar business, whatever, uh, uh, your previous podcasts, vlogs, whatever. And um, here I am just walking in and I was just like, I'm like, listen, man, you could sell me anything. Like, I want to support you at this yeah. point. Yeah, it's right. awesome. Oh, you, I need this for my car. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, that's fine. Please. My, my, neighbor's, uh, my neighbor's 15 years old, and he details my car all the time. Yeah. yeah. And he's got his own business. He's He he, he uh, has all kinds of luxury, exotic cars that he details. Yeah. And he's got a great system going on. And he'll, he'll drive over to their house, pick up their car, bring it back to the neighborhood, or he'll yeah. have his dad. Uh, go with him and his and his. He's got a, himself a nice little BMW. Yeah, and he'll go and he'll detail. And he has pictures all over his mm-hmm. Instagram page and has a really good system going. But yeah, it was amazing. And I walked in and I'm like, I'm like, you know, rent isn't cheap here because I knew exactly what building it is. He's like, he's like, well, you know, the spot we got is twenty two hundred a month. I'm like, okay. And then he's like, yeah, but I split it with you know one of my other friends who has a pressure washing business. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit! So now he's paying eleven hundred bucks a month. Uh, and like immediately they hear that, oh, you know, this is a guy whose family used to own Giovanni's. So, you know what the pressure washing guy does? He comes outside and he's like, he's like, oh, do you guys have a pressure washing service for your houses? You know, cause everyone like Mary knows, like me and my family, we all live three houses in a row. Yeah. We're on 10 acres, you know, whatever. And he's like, do you have a pressure washing service? I'm like, <laughs> I just laugh. And I'm like, no. And then he's like. He's like, well, you know, I got a pressure washing business right here. And I'm like, immediately gets so my phone. So that's where you learn that technique of like, hey, I'm going to go into the humidor. And then, uh. So I'm going I'm to make a bold statement. And that kid, that 19 year old, has zero reason to be going to college right now. Like, I know. He said, he said, he waste I agree. time I him, and money. I could see him in class right now just written. I disagree. I guarantee, yeah. you know, I guarantee, tell you why I disagree with that. <laughs> I, I guarantee what's going to happen. They're, they're all at Seminole State right now. They didn't go to major universities. And I bet you. Um, their parents want them to get an AA, I would, yep. yeah. and yeah. they're gonna yeah. get the just AA. Just get the AA, you know. Just yeah. get the yeah. two years. They're gonna yeah. get the two years, and then I think they're gonna be like, you know what? You know, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm yeah. either gonna grow this business or I'm gonna sell it. And like that kid Ethan, right away, he's like, uh, you know, he's asking questions about the business, and I'm giving him examples. I'm like, if you're doing two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, you know, if your profits this much, you know, this is how much you should sell your business for. And he's like, yeah. He's like, I was asking you those questions because eventually I would want to sell my business. I'm like, as you should, sell it to one of the big guys. Sell it to Mr. Carwash. Just a client, you know, is insane. And then I notice he has a uh, a monthly service, 99 bucks a month. They come clean your car uh, once every two weeks. And I'm like, dude, wow. get as yeah. much clients Genius. inside and outside. They come to your house, clean your car, and leave. I'm like, get as much clients as you can, yep. and that's your selling point. Yep. Yeah. Right there. Absolutely. Oh, but, you see, don't, but you don't see that anymore these days, man. Like, you don't see that that kind of work ethic, that kind of drive, that kind of ambition to go out and create something and build it from nothing. You don't. And, and a lot of times they're like, oh, well, I don't know how. It requires work and work do you understand? Do you understand that you have a computer in your pocket that uh, will teach you everything yeah. that you need to know? All you have to Chat do is- GPT will teach you a lot too. Oh, it'll write a book for you. <laughs> it'll, write, I mean, yeah, well, all you, it'll write you a children's book. Uh, <laughs> all you have to do is have some kind of drive in order to look it up, stop scrolling mindlessly and learn something like be a, be a forever student of life, be a forever student of learning your craft, read. I mean, just this past conference that we went to the vault, um, a few weekends ago, just constant you go next year, constant yeah, learning the that. craft, yeah, man. Yeah. Year. It was game changing, man. Yes. Like yes. Did you guys go to the cigar lounge too. Um, Not in this one. Okay, yeah. they, they had the cigar lounge in the Miami one the year prior this one was over in palm oh, okay so they didn't have that lounge there um yeah. but i mean we still had cigars next year there's some different yeah. places that they might be and yeah, yeah. We're, we're definitely going to be attending well okay. when we're done recording we will let you know where they're yeah yeah, yeah, yeah okay gotcha year. yeah yeah it's the secret but, still 
Yeah, we were just trying to go to that cigar lounge and hang out with Dave and all that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Patrick. Yeah, that's it. That happens still. We we've got some inside. But they do on the uh, yeah. Uh, they do though at the after party though the CEO after party they do have a uh, hand rolled cigar at the hand cigar cigar in front of you. Nice. Like, Enjoy I had, some. I, I don't know what it was, but I had a cigar. This lady, little Cuban lady, didn't speak any English, I, very little English, from like ten yards away. My cigar was going on. I needed a light. She sees it from like 10, 15 yards away. Comes over to me with a light. I was like, oh my God. Well, we were talking Most about that. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking about that customer last week. service, man. The yeah. lack of customer service we see nowadays. But then when you do find those places you go to and the customer service is on point like, like that, that where return. it's like, you know, you're on your last sip. Here's another drink. Yep. Those are the places you want to go and support because you're getting treated extremely well above right. and beyond now because it's very hard to find. Just yeah. Why, like that. why do we go hang out of the drawing room? I mean, because it's just an excellent atmosphere. Exactly. And yeah. the, the the customer the, service great. The customer yeah, service. The the um, um, butlers there yeah. are just on point. Yeah. They take care of you. And they make sure. Hey, your cigar's getting low. Hey, do you need another light? Do you need another drink? Do you need some more coffee? Like, they keep an eye on you. They keep and an that's eye. That's what on it you. is. You can yeah. tell. Yeah. You can tell them walking and around. They love it. They, they peek in, yeah, they peek in the side room. Yep. They peek in the side room. They're like, okay, yeah, like yeah. you, you can tell, like they're looking. Okay, is he on his last sip? Does yeah. he need more light? Does he yeah, want some more I coffee? Does they, he want? Yeah. And they know you too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, yeah. they know you. They're, and we they, spend they, a lot they, of time they, there. They yeah. remember you. Yeah. They remember. I mean, and that that's our experience. They remember us. We're well, even I mean, we went there one time and met this one bartender there. And the very next time we came in, she's like, "Oh yeah, I remember you guys." Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's even it's, it's not yeah. even you have to go three times. It's like one time, sure. and yeah. then you're good the next time you go. And but what it, does that speak on, like building the relationship, like as as a business owner, like building a relationship with your clients, building a relationship and having that communication? That I yeah. mean, just knowing who you are after the second time you walk in the door, like that blows my mind. Like you yeah. know my name, I walk in, I've only been here once, and how many people have you seen since me? Yeah, and and I think that's crazy because like going to Europe, right? Like going to Croatia, for example. Um, we stayed there recently. Most recently, we stayed there a week, right? We went to all new restaurants and stuff. But we are frequently, you know, frequently going to the same spots just because, like, you know, it was close by. We want a cup of coffee before we got our day started, whatever. But those people immediately, you know, the second time I came in, you know, they knew they knew what I wanted to drink, right? They knew that, you know, I liked my espresso a certain way or I liked uh, sparkling water instead of still. Like, they knew that. And I think over there, the service isn't as uh, talkative. You know, they'll leave you alone, but they're more attentive. Mm -hmm. They'll watch what's going on. They'll watch your table where if I finish my coffee and I'm just talking, you know, they'll come up and be like, did you want another one or did you want to, you know, what do you want to do basically? Yeah. Um, and, and those are, those are good values to bring back to, values. The, oh, to wow. bring back to home. I mean, I those, you could learn that at home and then you can learn that at, if we're teaching our young children that early on, how, mm -hmm. how many times have you gone? It's been, it's been a long time, but how many times have you gone into a Starbucks, for example, and you don't get that type of just attentiveness, no, yeah. you know, not, yeah. they you don't even better name right. me by my pronouns. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that can be said for any businesses today. There's lots of them out there that just don't take the time. It's just in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. Yeah, it's just a job. It's just a job. Yeah, and I understand that. They don't care I mean, about, it, yeah. it's young kids usually working. Sure. Yeah, and it's a corporate place. It's like, a corporate yeah. place. Yeah. So I mean, I understand that. But those businesses that really take care of those those patrons are the ones that really start to you, you see their value go up. Yeah. You always have the customer service, the regulars. Yeah. Always in and out. Yeah, Even, like you right. were saying the, the relationship aspect is probably the most important. Absolutely. Because if you have a good relationship with your clientele, that's why they want to keep coming back. Right. And w the product might even not even be that great, but the relationship speaks higher volumes than the product. Like it could be an okay product, but they treat me so well, I'm going to go support them. Yeah. As opposed to having the best product, but they treat you like shit. It's like, why am I going there? Right. I'm spending all this yeah. money, and they treat me like you know some guy off the street. And oh, go ahead. I go was ahead. gonna say, go like that was the hardest thing to teach. You know, growing up in the restaurant, teaching employees like to keep an eye out on people, like see what they're doing, see if they're aggravated, if they're waiting for their pizza, see if you know what's going on with them, how you could help them out. And like it was very tough for us to portray that, you know, to newer people in the industry you know young high schoolers or college kids working at the stores um we would have to like you know put that in their brain to always look out for the customer and see what they need 
just because we had a name we had to keep. You know, we've been we had a business for 30 years that I, I mean, it thrived. Right. Yeah. So there's a reason why it thrived. And it was the customer relations. It was the pizza, the quality of the food. It was all of these things. You lose the customer relations. You know, your food could be fantastic, you know, like you said, but no one will go there. I think it goes by like leading by example too is like if you're the owner of a business and you have employees under you mm -hmm. and you are showing your employees like this is the, going back to culture and this is like who we are as a brand this is who we are as a business and i'm showing you and i'm paying attention to the, the client's needs i'm paying attention to to what conversations they're had like w when we were at the vault uh i'm gonna butcher his last name will greer um, he he told a story. Well, Gudera, Gudera. Um, I don't know why I always say Greer. I apologize. Um, Will told a story in the restaurant business that he always kept an ear out for conversations. Exactly. And he noticed, like he's in downtown New York. This company, this uh, family was from Spain, and they like they were leaving from the restaurant to go back to the airport. And they're like, you know, we traveled all this way. We wanted to try all these nice restaurants, and we did. However, what we really wanted to do is have a hot dog. Yeah, yeah. Well, water from dog. one of this, like a water dog from one of those yeah. stands. A dirty water dog. Dirty water yeah. dog. That and was it. He ran out the back door, ran across the street, got a hot dog, came into his very nice Michelin Five star, star yeah. restaurant and said, told the chef, I want you to serve this hot dog. And he looked at him and was like, what? You're crazy. <laughs> You're yeah. freaking crazy. Well, he did. He made it, the presentation, like amazing. He served this and it blew that client's mind. It blew them out of the water because it was just attention to those small details that speaks volume one for your brand. Yeah. But you as an owner, and then as you hire people, as you have new, let's say the 19 year old comes in and they don't have that kind of, the those kind of ethics or those kind of morals or those kind of like attention to small detail, you show them like you, you say this is who we are and you start to build them up into that that place and then if they're not acceptive of it you're there was a quote he said be very slow to hire but quick to fire yeah get rid of them and then look for the next person that will adopt your methodologies as a brand because that is so important in the hospitality realm to pay attention to those small details and blow your clients out of the water. I think that's huge for companies. It is. I mean, even uh, I was telling a story when I, w I was at the Four Seasons and when I pull up, you know, it's all valet, right? So they go open up my door first and I was with my girlfriend. So I'm like, I'm like, no, 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 open up her door first, you know, be the respectful yep. thing to do, right? Since then, I guess, you know, they build profiles on people. So since then, if they didn't have two people, they started bringing two people to open up our doors at the same time. If they didn't have two people that would open up her door first. And then, wow. you know, if I, I mentioned, uh, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to uh, Hollywood Studios in the morning. And, you know, I think I'm going to come back around three or four and come to the pool. Well, as soon as I came back, I was a little late. I start walking towards the pool. We got ready. And they're like, oh, Mr. Nikolai, you know, we've been expecting you. We have a spot saved for you at the pool. Huge. And I'm wow. like, how easy is that? Though? I know. You so could easy. have how the, easy is that? You could have the best experience the entire time. And then one moment can ruin everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So just look at that. You know, they're they're staying on top of things every exactly. single minute of the day yeah. where now you're like, you're leaving with like, dude, that was the best time I've ever had. Yeah. When are we coming back? I Drop like, another grand. You could ask Alex. Yeah, yeah. A little bit more than that, but yeah. I was, <laughs> yeah, I, I was talking about a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You could ask Alex. I was talking about that experience for months. Just because, it, the, and it wasn't even, you know, the overall. I mean, yeah, it was a nice room. Sure. It was a nice hotel, but it was like those little things that just stuck with me. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, holy shit. You know, I wish more places were like this. Yeah. And then that's where the drawing room comes in in London House. You know, yeah. that's where that whole experience comes in. It's it's the little things that really matter and are what makes things memorable. Like yeah. that dirty water dog. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, so much of it is being personable also. Like yeah. you you have so much right now with the kids coming up. Like I got some old buddies. I got I could count on one hand how many people from the fire service back in the days that I'm still really good friends with. Yeah. But they're still involved with it or they're doing like their teaching classes and they say right now the kids coming up like they don't they don't know how to have a conversation with anybody. Like they don't they, they just don't know how to yeah. do it. They're on phones or texting. They can't assess a patient like a normal person yeah they, they just don't 
don't have that capacity. And it's all just about being personal, being likable. Um, you know, one one thing that I, I I half joke about it. I think I think it should be required for everybody growing up work at least one year in a restaurant. Like I agree. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get the, get that experience in there because it'll do wonders for you. Whether you're just waiting tables, bus, anything like that. Like you need to have uh, that. I mean, experience. I give it. I give it up to. Hospitality, hospitality. Yeah. but it's yeah. it's not an easy. Well, one thing that one reason that rolled over is like prior to prior to getting into this, like I was working for a new construction builder and I was in the warranty department. Miserable. Like yeah. the reason that people reached out to me is because something was wrong with their house and they weren't happy about it. You so just drop three, four hundred grand on a brand new home and then the stuff something's happens. not right and stuff happens. Uh, a lot of it. They don't understand that there is homeowner maintenance involved in some things. Yeah. But you know, I go there. You have know, to change mo- your most of the time, I can help them with stuff. But a lot of times, like I'm sorry, this isn't covered. But when I would walk into their houses, I'm personable with them. Like I'm walking into the room. I, I I'd already get like the uh, the attitude from the guy who opens the door. I walk in, take a look over to the left. I see you know a bunch of Pittsburgh Steelers like jerseys and shit. I'm like, all right. Oh, cool. Hey, so what would you think of the game this past weekend? Just something like that. I'm just getting on a conversation. How long have you been here? And just something something where I can connect with this guy. And then we go on a conversation where it's like, all right, well, you know, I'm likable. Like, the guy likes me. So and then he would immediately say something about the Eagles to that guy. And, yeah, you know. exactly. <laughs> but it, go when, birds. Well, but being like, you know, my job was to every, every year they would get a survey and we had to get a 10 on one of those questions in there. And while they may have a rough experience, experience with the house up till then up yeah. to that point of the survey they liked me they like they like they liked it that i was very personal i was a likable person well you i are a very do, likable guy I, I can i when i need to turn the switch on i can turn it on yeah i can turn it off <laughs> i can turn it off i can also turn it on you, you, know, you know that <laughs> make sure to put but, nasty comments under their videos all right yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 we got a few begging for you but when Be you're like most of the time like a, like a lot of times like i train. was one of those top producers in there because i would get that survey in not because the house was spectacular or i was able to take care of every single thing but because like well I like David. Like, yeah, yeah. D- David was he was really good. Like, mentioned something about a birthday coming up. He'd come back a month later. Hey, how was that birthday? Like, these are just like the things that you remember from working in exactly. a restaurant. And me, how to be, how to, how to interact with people yeah. on an emotional level. Even um, you know, going to UCF for engineering, right? Most of those people, you know, they were taught to do engineering work, and that's it. They never had a job to get through it. Their parents paid for it all, whatever, um, and engineers that are being graduated, more and more companies are looking for not that typical engineer to, you know, just sit down and do nothing. They want that personable engineer, right? They want that guy that either worked in a restaurant or they grew up in a big family, so they know how to talk to people. Um, They want that person because it's hard to find someone, you know, in a technical field who's like smart with tech, but then could also talk to people and sell something if they need to. Um, And like, that's that's struggling like it just in that field to find those people debatably more important than the the knowledge of being an engineer i agree in yeah. the business side because it's easier yeah. to learn that knowledge than yes. it is to learn how to be personable. it is absolutely I mean, I mean you gotta think about it for years right engineers were taught on the job yeah right you know hey you designed a bridge uh i'm gonna teach you how we design this bridge and why it makes sense and this this and this and this um all the engineering I learned in school, I don't use any of it, right? Mm-hmm. And I have a job in engineering right now. But it's, it's theory. It, I mean, it's theory, yeah. I learned everything I know now for my company my at my company. Yeah. Right? I, I, I've had this conversation with people who've, you know, before I earned my degrees, um, I've had that conversation with people to say, like, oh, I have a four year degree. Why am I not getting paid more than the guy that's been working why, why there for I, Why don't years? I have six figures right out of college? Right. Well, and also, it, yeah, you have don't someone I? who... Yeah, Kamala Harris can give me 25K. It's, ooh, I mean, how much is that going to cost now, though? Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> but you have guys that have been working in a company for four years while the other person has been going to school for four years on that same same you know yeah. profession yeah. or whatever. They're learning theory. The other one's being practical, yeah. uh, learning the practical portion. So the individual that finishes school comes out expecting to be at that same rate of pay when this person's been employed for four years and wants to be over this person. I have a degree, okay? Yeah, but do you know how this? Do you know how this company operates? Yeah. Do you know what we do every Monday, every Tuesday? What we do at the beginning of the month, the end of the month? What do you? What do we do as far as our values? Because there's a lot of values. We we're talking about Andy Frisilla. 
and you come into his company, it doesn't matter what kind of degree you have, okay? I've, I've been a manager for a multi-level, multi-company business, yeah. all right? But then I come in, I don't know how to package the most important thing. Our, our box is is designed so it, it draws attention, that it's, yeah. it's, it's elegant, it's luxurious. Those are the things I wanted to people to see. But if it's not done right, the packaging for his stuff, first of all, those guys have to put all the effort into packaging the product Make it look because this is what's going out to the customer. Yeah. Okay, so you have to pay attention to those things, and so those are the details. Those pay attention to details that people forget and don't yeah. learn in school. You might learn theory, but you don't learn how to do those things. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, you know, back in that humidor where I sold you guys a Besa, uh, excellent. Story, I just like right. repeating it because Alex doesn't think I do anything. Um, <laughs> but- <laughs> He learned that trick from me. Uh, there it is. <laughs> but um, you showed me pictures. I'm pretty sure it was that night. You showed me pictures of this box, right? And, you know, I think it was just like a, a prototype or maybe you guys just got it in and, yep. you know, the cigars weren't in yet. But I remember you showed me a picture of the box and I'm like, that looks elegant. Yep. That looks beautiful. Like if I pick this box up, you know, it's, just, it's a 10, it holds 10 cigars, right? 10 cigars. 10 yep. cigars. I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to know it's quality. Yep. You know, just by design, the the gold, the blue, um, the 10 cigars. I mean, it's even the interior gives it's you done. It's, it's done. done. It's yeah, done it's the right way. Yeah. yeah. We, we when we when we looked at this, we wanted to make sure that when you buy our product that you're going to look at this and go, wow, this is this. These guys paid attention to detail. These exactly. guys not not only is the cigar perfect in every single way, yeah. but it's. It look at the the branding on it. It's it it, it holds true to our brand. Our lead don't follow. We we really specialize in that right there. Lead don't follow, and we wanted to lead. You know, while we're the new guys in this industry, these are things that we want to become. You know, one of you know, it's just no different than our podcast. We want to be in that top twenty percent. We want to be in that top five percent. We want to be in that top one percent. So we're going to continue to push. We're going to be in volume two of the Cigar Guy's Ultimate Guide to Cigars, right? We're going to be in that next volume, and it's going to be something that's going to elevate us as a brand, elevate us as a, as a company. David, did, you you just, did you just muscle your way into volume two? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's on video. Now we have to. Yeah. 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 I like it. You know, David, going back to one thing that you were saying, I'm just going to circle back around to it because I think it's important, is – being able to de-escalate a a potential i won't say hostile client but an angry client like because you were in the warranty claim right mm-hmm. so if something was wrong with my home and i'm going to call you and you're going to walk in the door i'm already like rage eight out of ten you know what i mean so you coming in there and having the ability to de-escalate that client having the ability to take them down and be personal like hey i'm i'm here to fu- fix your problems yeah. I'm, I'm i'm here, here to help you i'm here to help you yeah. i'm here to listen to what you have to say i'm here to listen to what you feel like is wrong show it to me and in the meantime i'm going to build a relationship with you i'm yeah. going to comment on the steelers i'm going to comment on whatever things that you have in your home to build that kind of relationship and i'm going to look for those small details and i think that's a lot of things in, in today's generation that they're like oh that's that that's not worth it or that's not yeah, that's not matter. important that doesn't yeah, right. matter like it's just about making a dollar well you're not going to make that dollar if you're not personal per person yeah exactly yeah you know what i mean i'm typically right most of the times so. and you're all right. <laughs> you, you, didn't wear that, you didn't wear that shirt today yeah i did i wore it last I'm time call your wife i doubled up she'll tell, she'll tell <laughs> you she'd be like yeah she'll he is you. he is right <laughs> All right, well. Awkward silence. That happens once in a while. It's usually the cue. Like, you know, it's a cue. <laughs> all right, I think we've kind of been doing this a little bit. <laughs> but overall, I mean, first of all, great conversation, guys. I yeah. mean, I appreciate you guys for coming out. Uh, cigars are fantastic. As far as Connecticut's goes, this is like top tier. as term, In terms of flavor, construction, everything was fantastic. I mean, Z, Cordoba Morales, he does a fantastic job. He does a great job. Yeah. Uh, presentation's fantastic. I mean, I lo- and I love, too, what you guys stand for and the story behind the product. Yeah, when you when when we walked into uh, the drawing room 
or when you guys walked in after us and you're like yeah we got our cigars in here i was so happy just to see you. i'm like yes i want to see it in person now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it is an exciting you know when uh when they finally made it in there because we had been taking pictures to kind of like it's that manifestation you know we're yeah. manifesting that it's going to be here we've been talking about it for months and i'm like hey as soon as we get the cigars were ready the bands were ready the box wasn't it was taking forever the box took you so know, it just, long you know trying to get a perfect product you know you're trying to get it out there and when we finally got it we we had we had gotten a a, a demo box uh, a couple months ago right yeah a few uh, months ago yeah a few, a few months, months ago, ago. and it was the only one we had, so we're like, "Hey, let's take a bunch of pictures real quick and <laughs> and get it on the shelf and make it look like it's pretty." And it was then, given as a gift, and we <laughs> and then we gifted it uh, to our partner Chris, and then it's like, "All right, now we're waiting for the rest of them." And so it's like, "All right, now what do we do? Because we got to promote this, we got to yeah. get this on the website, we got to wait for the next box." And so um, when it finally got into uh, the drawing room, we we're very excited, happy to have them there. Um, it's a new cigar. Um, it's it's taken a lot. I, I got to look at it, and looks like we're gonna have to do another restock. Right. <laughs> well, we'll think about too when we talk about when we look back on Fond on like where we started with the podcast, where we are now. I mean, the first time we went to London House, Chris brought us there, uh, brought all the wives there. Uh, great little experience, a dinner dinner excursion there. We were just like, what is this place? Like, yeah. this is an amazing place. I love this. And from there, just a few couple of years ago to now we have our own product in, in their lounge in the lounge yeah, yeah. it's that's it's huge. huge it's wild huge. yeah it's yeah. awesome yeah 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 so right now it, i mean this is a brand new cigar like brand new brand brand new you can get it on your website right yep. you yes. can fill out an order form and get it there you can get it at the london house so but keep an eye on it because it's going to be at lounges in the orlando area for Correct. sure and beyond but yeah, right now, go to the website, which is RaisingAlphasProject.com. It's under the cigar link. We're updating the website a little bit more, so it's going to be a little bit more user-friendly. But right now, uh, you go on, you fill in the form. <clears throat> the form gets sent right to our admin account, and then we send you back the invoice, and then we'll uh, invoice you and then ship it out to you. There you go. Yeah. Pretty and check simple. out the podcast, too, um, Raising Alphas Project. Raising Alphas mm -hmm. Project. You can find us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, what else? Uh, all, all of them. them. Yeah, all, all of them. them. Everything. Yeah, all of them. We post um, every week, Monday morning, we have a new show. Uh, we have guests on there. We do some cigar talk. We have uh, some uh, political reviews. We did something on the uh, assassination attempt on the president. That's coming out on Alleged. The, allegedly Alleged. Um, <laughs> on Monday. So we uh, trying some different things out, getting content out there. You know, um, and then yeah, we're 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 on every platform. Fantastic. Facebook. Yep. Again, thank you guys for coming on. Great talk. Great yeah. seeing you guys. Thank you for having us yeah. out here, thank man. You guys so much. Of course. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Take care, guys. See you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the latest episodes. Looking for short form content? Check out all our social media accounts in the description below.